Hello everyone, so today Moderna released news that their COVID vaccine has apparently reached 94.5% effectiveness in its phase 3 study. And Pfizer announced similar results last week with their reported 90% effective COVID vaccine released also in a phase 3 study. So the question that many investors are wondering is, what does this mean for the economy? Can this get the economy up and going again? And can it prevent the U.S. and major global economies from falling even deeper into debt? Today I'll look into this, so stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. My name's Logan. I really like to talk about overall success and investing, as well as going against crowd thinking mentality and just the um, psychologic nature of investing. And uh, yeah, uh, if you like these kinds of topics, just consider subscribing. I also want to make a disclaimer here that none of this is to be taken as financial advice. So to get started, let's look at how crucial it would be for the U.S. economy and major global economies to get back on track at this time. In the last several months since the beginning of the shutdown, government debt and spending around the world has skyrocketed. Look back at the little blip that occurred during the entire 2008 crisis, and then compare that to the current leap that took place earlier this year. And this is just looking at the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank. Um, Many banks are in much worse, uh, similar, similar but worse situations as the United States. And with other stimulus rounds on the way, this could jump up even more. Now, as you may have seen in an earlier video I did about Stephen Van Meter and his assessment of this, you should know that despite common narrative, quantitative easing and stimulus does not lead to inflation. In fact, it leads to the opposite by removing liquidity from the system and leading to a deflationary environment. But the main question now is, can we move back to a strong economy quickly enough to somehow get out of this predicament we are in without a complete financial meltdown happening? Maybe a vaccine could improve this virus uh, and get everyone back, everyone back to work. You know, That's kind of the mentality that everyone's hoping for right now. And then we can make our way back to a more reasonable level of debt. And that would be the hope that everyone's kind of banking on. Um, so to begin with, both today and last week, the market reacted very positively to this news of a vaccine for coronavirus. As I've stated before, COVID has been a consistent downward pressure on the economy as a whole and on asset prices. So this news of a vaccine being 90% or 95% effective should mean a lot in terms of taking away this downward pressure. At least that has been the thinking the market has obviously had, with the S&P 500 hitting new all-time highs in the last week. However, all of these are phase 3 trials, so there are still potentially months of time before these vaccines could be approved and studied enough to then be given to the public as a whole. And then, you know, several more months before enough people actually get these vaccines to ease the restrictions and to decrease the infections of COVID. And this is all ignoring the fact that many people's habits have changed in the last eight months since the shutdown has started. If there's anything that can make or break a habit, it's being unable to go do a certain thing or being forced out of necessity to do a different action. In fact, it only takes roughly anywhere from a month to nine months to form or break a habit of most kinds. So the main question remains that if people were able to get back to normal life, would they go back to everything that they were doing before. And it would seem that the evidence to this is indicating that people's habits have changed as a result of the shutdown. With an economy predominantly driven by consumer spending, this is very important to understand the direction the economy is going, and JP Morgan did a study on this several months ago. They found that, not surprisingly, e-commerce and online shopping has boomed like never before during this time, but also not surprisingly that certain sectors have been cut down significantly if not eliminated altogether. These hard hit areas would be obvious ones such as in-person dining, travel, retail stores, hospitality, and airlines. So while many of these businesses may have been able to switch to doing business online or remotely, many of them simply have not been able to. And these hard hit businesses would be ones such as the smaller businesses of the before mentioned sectors. So family owned restaurants, travel, and hospitality, and these small businesses employ tens of millions of Americans, and tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of other people around the world. So you hopefully begin to see 
how this news of a vaccine really falls short of what we could be facing. As a result of these shutdowns that continue to go on, and you know some states are actually kind of re-going into shutdowns right now. I have no idea why, but I'm probably having to do with some of the uh, surging cases going on. But we've been forced to have a much more efficient economy, uh, one where rather than driving to work, we can work from home remotely. One where rather than dining or shopping away from our house, we can have our food and items purchased online and delivered directly to our house. So we have definitely moved to a more efficient economy. Uh, we require less energy, we have less polluted cities, we have much less congested highways uh, and roads in our cities. Uh, we fly much less, so we pollute the atmosphere a lot less. But in doing all this, there is also the trade-off of eliminating tens of millions of jobs. And the initial stimulus done in the spring is nowhere near sufficient to offset the revenue that these businesses have needed to give up in closing down uh, temporarily. So no level of stimulus the government could do, even now, could help to bail out these hundreds of thousands of small businesses. And even though some new jobs have been created in, say, delivery of items or online teaching or shipping fulfillment centers, many jobs have just been cut out entirely. Um, I, w I would argue that many more have been cut out entirely than have been replaced elsewhere. Just think of the educational system for a minute. In now having to learn online, uh, you no longer need to hire dozens of teachers or professors to teach a class. Now you simply need one teacher recording lectures and posting them online for all of these students. You could have thousands of students uh, just being taught by one person now. And sure, you might still need some of these teachers to help with, say, tutoring, um, or grading, but I mean, even even grading is really electronically done now. Um, so you've just made this process a whole lot more efficient. It costs the university or the school system a lot less, but you've also eliminated a lot of higher level jobs, is what I'm saying. So what am I hoping to say through this video? I started off with the potential hope of returning to normal due to these vaccines, and now I've gone down sort of a rabbit hole, it seems. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that even with the most fast-track vaccine that is available to the masses in another month or two, which is really not realistic, uh, even with that, certain habits and cultural values have been changed permanently as a result of the shutdowns and changes people have needed to make. Why would you want to go back to in-person learning where you have to pay to stay in a college dorm when you could just learn these exact same classes online from your parents' home? Uh, the answer is mo most people would not choose to do that. Uh, so as a result of this, we've made a lot of jobs and businesses go away. Now, what is the result of this, and how bad does it actually get? You know, I have no idea, but it doesn't bode well right now. It doesn't look very great right now. Right now, there doesn't appear to be some sort of decision we can make in order to avoid this um, potential financial meltdown. Um, so... You know, where this takes you, what investment decisions you choose to make with this uh, is up to you. I'm not going to give any sort of advice. Uh, again, I don't want any of this to be taken as advice, but I'm just saying that um, contrary to what many people are hoping for, what they're really, you know, desiring to happen, I just don't know how realistic any of these um, are. And I would say personally that the more likely outcome is... Uh, you know, some sort of deflationary bust coming that uh, David Hunter and other people have kind of warned about for the last several months. But I genuinely hope that I'm wrong. I genuinely hope that that does not happen. But that's just kind of the more likely path I see right now. So, again, uh, if you guys like these kinds of topics, just consider subscribing, and I hope to see you again.